Good morning, Sasan Good morning, Earthlings, welcome to another edition of Crypto Degenerates, your favorite crypto show. I'm Rob, one of your hosts. That's Darko, nodding at you over there. He's your other host. Darko, how you doing tonight? Good. You? Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing good, Darko. I'm glad to see you've been working on your vocabulary, as I suggested. Good. Yeah. Thanks. You ready to give the people a good show? Teach them a lot of stuff about cryptocurrency and, you know, technical, complicated concepts like that. You ready? See, si, it's Spanish for yes. Good. So you're going to do a good job. Yes. Yeah, and we're not going to have a repeat of last time. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Uh, well, yes, ladies and yes. gentlemen, we will jump right into the news. I'm sure you're very <laughs> pleased to see us again. Darko amusing himself at your expense once again. I mean, did you, how did you not miss this for a week, right? Fucking earth. Fucking earth. How could you not? How could, it feels like it's been 10 fucking years since the last episode, dude. 10 fucking years. Yeah, so, I, I without further there. ado... What's been going on in the crypto world, Rob? Well, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot. Uh, decentralized finance consider uh, continues to be at the tip of everybody's tongue. Um, I, for one, am sick of hearing that word, uh, those words. But uh, it seems to be with us, and uh, a lot of people really uh, buying into these projects. Another one folded recently. I, I don't even have that in our headlines, but I did re <laughs> read about it. I think this one was to the tune of 20 million, lost, gone. Uh, yeah. I, God knows where all these investors are coming from. It's been a lot of, and, unless the people that are, you know, stealing all this money are going and investing it in the next scam and they're getting taken themselves. Seems like an awful lot of money's being lost. I don't know where it goes. Rob, we spoke about this, was it last week or the week before? It was within the last two weeks. And yeah, what did we say? It's every week, Darko. We said anything that... Be no, 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 but we said specifically anything now, these days, that starts with the letter Y as a coin, like a YF something, is most likely a scam. Most of them are scams. You've got Yearn Finance, which is fine, and Yearn Finance 2, which is migrated to DeFi money, that's fine. But now we've got dozens of all these other YF coins coming out, and most of them, if not nearly all of them, are scams. We mentioned this in the last two weeks, and yet people... Oh, that was a little one. Oh, okay. But people still follow their greed. They think, oh, yeah, it's $27. I'm going to jump in it because it's a YF coin and the $27 investment is going to shoot up to $6,000, $7,000, just like YF1 and YF2 did. But what they fail to do is when they look at these shit coins, because that's exactly what they are without exaggeration. They're just scam coins, shit coins. They fail to look at the, the volume, the trading volume. And... When you see these new YF coins come out, for example, and you see it's got $20,000 trading volume as a YF coin, you know something's not right. Also, the, the brand, the token symbol, lo well, not the token symbol, but the token logo is also, generally speaking, a good indicator of the quality of the project. Now, these YF coins have these shitty rushed paintbrush style logos which that really doesn't make any sense. I mean, you know, out. there are tools out there that if somebody, you know, I mean, you don't have an artist or you're not creative or whatever, uh, you can just go get the free tool and it'll spit out a halfway fucking, you know, acceptable logo. And to not even do that, I, I think <laughs> it really kind of tells you the caliber of people that you're dealing with at the other end. Literally, right. how little amount of work can I do to throw something in front of a bunch of people and get them to give me their money. Bro, some of these logos I've seen that go ahead alongside these YF coins, right? I could take a shit and use it as a coin logo and it, it'll still look better quality. 
than some of the YF logos on CoinGecko. Oh, I'm like, all for that. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I think you should they do should, that. I'm not exaggerating either. I'm not exaggerating. It's the truth. But yeah, look, that $20 million scam shit, I can't remember the name of the coin, but I did read about that article as well. Yeah. And I mean, what do you expect? We said it. People didn't listen and they lost $20 million, bro. Uh, well, yeah. yeah listen, uh, <clears throat> I say it repeatedly. Only deal in profit. Never deal in loss. People want to keep ignoring that advice. That's fine. Um, the problem here, and I think one of the difficulties is, is that all of this is mixed in with, as you say, there are some projects that are legitimate. There are people successfully doing the farming. If everybody was losing, this wouldn't happen. Uh, some people are winning, and a bunch of people are losing, and they're losing hard. Um, you know, that in, in, in essence sums up the danger of the situation and why these, you know, it's such a dangerous area for somebody to put their money into. It's not that you're destined to be scammed. It's not that you're destined to lose your money. It's that the likelihood is <laughs> pretty high that that's something that's going to happen. And you're not really in control of it. Now, if investors were banding together before they were jumping into something like this, uh, and doing something like a proper audit, you know, a hundred people could kick in a little bit of money apiece uh, and find out some things before they invest in this. What's the trouble there? Well, time passes. And a lot of these scams are predicated on the idea that you want to convince people if they don't act today, they're not going to be one of those early adopters. So uh, really what's been fine-tuned with this whole craze has been the idea of you know, convincing people of that feeling that they're going to miss out. That's an old scammer's technique, uh, and it's something that we've seen at, at different points in the crypto sphere emerge as sort of a selling tactic. Um, this one, it's not even trying to hide it. it it's, it's like right out front of the store. Uh, if you don't get in the door quickly, you're not going to be one of the lucky ones. And the scary thing is, is that even in the case of the legitimate projects, there's some truth to that. And, and that's what makes it convincing when the scams are saying it. Because they know that that's the very nature of these things. The, the people that are setting up shop in a successful ecosystem first are going to make the most money. They are. Um, that's the attractant. And that's, again, why I say this is so dangerous. I mean, this is like wandering into a field of gigantic Venus flytraps where somewhere hidden in the field is a box of gold nuggets. But good luck navigating the fucking field. Um, you know, maybe there are safer investments out there for people to try and, and watch as this thing burns itself out. Well, like we said a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I understand the concept of farming and all that shit. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, right? right? But the problem in crypto is once you become greedy, you lose. Okay? Now, these farming platforms are motivated by greed. Nothing else. It's all motivated by greed which is fine to an extent, you know, you want to <laughs> accumulate more, grow your portfolio, whatever. But it, anytime you get greedy in crypto, you will lose. 99% of the time you will lose. So we said in the last couple of weeks, stay away from these things, stay away from these platforms, because when you get greedy, you will lose. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, there's no point in repeating ourselves. There's no point repeating ourselves, so... Uh, listen, um, if somebody doesn't get the point about that, I, I mean, there's plenty of people that won't, and, and the reason is that they missed a larger point. And that same statement can be made about life itself. And this is a, there's a larger lesson. A lot of people haven't learned it. But once you've been greed into anything, it basically goes to shit. So, you know, your decision-making process goes to shit. Your ability to make intelligent decisions data-informed decisions, not emotional decisions, all go to shit once you're blinded by greed. It poisons relationships yeah. between people, it poisons business operations and business partnerships, it poisons everything that it touches. Ain't that the truth? Now, Rob, I've got an interesting fun fact for you. Did you know, did you know that the Crypto Degenerate Show premieres every Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EST time? And if you haven't subscribed, liked, shared, and retweeted this episode, please do so while ensuring you hit that notification bell. Did you know? Oh, you know, I, I, I had no idea. None.
Yeah, I, I kind of missed that on saying it earlier in the show, so I thought sure. I'd just chuck it in there right now. <laughs> sure. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that news flash and update. That was uh, vitally fucking necessary. Uh, I mean, especially for the people who found their way here, you know, at nine, and are watching us now. For the, for them to know that we were on at nine, it is really uh, useful information. Uh, I've got more useful information uh, for the people here. Uh, our good friends over at Binance <laughs> have been sued for allegedly facilitating money laundering with lax KYC. Yeah, uh, Binance's lax KYC requirements are creating more legal problems for the exchange, according to Cointelegraph. Um, so I, I, I guess on, they're... Does, what, hang on, does, does Binance use lax for their KYC structure? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, uh, lax meaning laid back, like uh, they do. Oh, I thought you meant like a, a company brand was called lax. Sorry, like LAX. Oh, all right, yeah, go on. Sorry. No, no, lax as if they were they were given a laxative, they took it, and now they are relaxed, and so certain things can happen, right? Relaxed like that. Uh, yeah. So okay. they they have been using X lax brand KYC on their platform. And it's just, oh, you know, you send them a, a crayon drawing of yourself and date it, and then they'll say, oh, yeah, you, you check out. Yeah. So uh, apparently some people are not happy with that, and a bunch of fucking assholes have gotten together <clears throat> and are suing them for their lax KYC requirements. The plaintiffs are claiming that the weak KYC requirements and high daily withdrawal limit facil facilitated the laundering of $60 million stolen from the exchange. The lawsuit was filed in the Northern District of California by representatives of Fisco Cryptocurrency Exchange, oh, damn, damn. Which, which acquired Zave soon after the hack. Um, so I guess this was an exchange was hacked, and then they're saying that because Binance was lax in their KYC requirements, the people that hacked the one exchange were able to take their ill-gotten gains move them over to Binance and liquidate them there. And that somehow all of this is Binance's fault. They should have been, you know, more strict in trying to identify their customers and, and limiting their withdrawals. Rather than, for example, response, well, rather than, for example, the original exchange, uh, the plaintiffs, actually having security in place that would have prevented their users from having $60 million stolen from them, which would have prevented the entire situation. They're not going to win this one, dude, because while the laws do state that it's a requirement by the exchanges to have KYC, the laws do not state what exactly the KYC should, should consist of, what kind of structure it should have. It's, it's a very gray area. So yeah, finance by law are required to utilize the whole KYC system, but it's up to them to decide how to do it because there's no actual law saying yeah. this is how to do KYC. Yeah. So this, so, so far Binance have done the right thing. They've abided by the law. They've conducted a KYC process. Whatever that process is doesn't matter anymore because they've conducted a KYC process and the lawsuit, I believe, will not be successful for the plaintiff. Oh, yeah, listen, I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but I know here in the States, plenty of these people who have wanted to play on that side of things um, have are all over the public record bitching about the lack of guidance on how to do so correctly. I mean, right off the bat, walking into court, they can demonstrate that they've been asking for somebody to please, you know, present a clear set of guidelines for them to follow. Now, even somebody like me, who's a completely against KYC in any capacity, can see that for what it is. They're, you know, they've been told, do the best you can, they are. It's hard to hold somebody accountable under those circumstances. They want to walk the line between not driving away customers and doing what they, you know, the right thing, as some people would say. Um, naturally, they're going to, you know, they're not being paid for enforcement, okay? But those KYC regulations are there to protect people other than themselves, and it's not in their best interest to make them super strict. So unless some external body comes along and says everybody has to operate under these parameters, they're going. You can't expect them to give themselves a uh, position of disadvantage 
in the rest of the playing field. And that includes exchanges that don't do any KYC. That ex includes exchanges that have much more lax KYC than them. Why should Binance go and say we're going to go above and beyond simply because other people would like us to? Um, it, it makes no sense. Now, if there is a strong regulatory set of guidelines on how to do this correctly, if Binance is aware of this, and if there's enforcement that holds everybody to the standard, you know, something like this may be able to succeed if they didn't meet those standards. But I don't, I don't see that that exists. Right, I think these current KYC methods are actually a little bit overkill. I mean, it's so fucking annoying. I don't even need to explain it, but I'll say it without explaining it. But it's so fucking annoying to hold up an A4 sized piece of paper with whatever information they want you to write on it and hold up your passport or your license to try and fit all this shit on the same screen while fitting in your face so they know it's you holding both articles but you've got to do them in a certain way where the tiny writing is also clearly visible so you can't get too close to the camera because the, the A4 paper and the ID and your face won't fit and you can't go too far because then the writing on the documentation is not readable so you've got to sort of find yourself somewhere in the middle and 10 takes later you might just get it just visibly right it's fuck, I fucking hate KYC. Well, I, I mean, you I know, it. I'll go a step further and say they could fuck off and die. I, I, I'm not interested mm. in that procedure at all. If people wish to trade in places where that's required, that's their business, but it should not be mandated for everybody to do so. And I, I've got news for you. The customers of that exchange that got hacked should be pointing the finger squarely at one entity. And that's the entity that failed to secure their assets, okay? Um, and, and the fact that the criminals were able to go elsewhere to liquidate those assets is completely immaterial. If it wasn't Binance, they would be able to go someplace else. At the end of the day, if they really felt they had no other option, they could go to the DEXs and take a little more time and liquidate the shit there. Let's be real. I mean, let's talk about what the situation really is. So, uh, you know, Binance may be a lot of things, but I don't see that they've done anything wrong here, at least in terms of, of this lawsuit and the way it's uh, uh, couched. At the end of the day, everybody, keep your fucking funds off exchanges. That's it. Just keep them off exchanges. Period. Period. That's it. Simple. Easy. Mm -hmm. Cold storage, all the way. All right. So, Rob, I have an article here from the ex president of Morgan Stanley, Bitcoin Ether Ripple, which he refers to as Ripple, XRP. Your favorite. Uh, moonshots. I oh, fucking love e XRP. Dude, breaking news. Did you know that XRP is officially a POS coin, a POS coin? Did you know this? Hmm? Breaking news. Did you know? Rob? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not playing your games. If, if unless this is another endorsement. Did you know XRP? It's breaking I'm news. not listening. XRP. No, XRP. Breaking news. XRP is a POS coin, a POS coin. You didn't hear about it. Hmm. Proof of shit coin. That's uh, what it stands for. It's a uh, proof of uh, shit and, and, coin. And there's the payoff. We we knew the payoff was coming, mm -hmm. Darko, and and there it is. See, that's why I won't play because as soon as I hear XRP, I know that the next thing that's come out of your mouth is going to be a joke, or a glowing endorsement, joking. one or the other, because we've already had right. that, haven't we? You know why the mother company is called Ripple, Rob? You know why it's called Ripple? Because by the time the next bull run comes, XRP coin is just going to ripple out into the ocean and and disappear forever. Ah. Yeah? Uh. It's going to fade away, oh. fade away, like in ripples. Isn't that's why that it's called it? ripple. That's, that's this is very all poetic. for the coin. That's very poetic, Darko. Oh, you can thank the developers for that, not me. <laughs> so. <laughs> Dark, <laughs> Dark, Dark, Darko's, Darko's repertoire on ripple is like fucking Freddy Krueger. Just when you think it, you can come out, it's fine. Oh, shit, no, there he is again. Oh, oh welcome to dreamland, kitties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, what so else you got for us, Darko? president of Morgan Stanley. Oh, I only read the headline. I haven't even got through the article yet. But the former co-president of Morgan Stanley, Zoe Cruz, calls cryptocurrencies a potential moonshot opportunity. Now she woke up. Cruz highlighted the advantage of XRP 
which is also a POS coin, as we discussed, over the traditional financial system and SWIFT for cross-border payments. Now, during a webinar, the Kennan Institute of Private Enterprise, Zoe Cruz, former co-chair of Morgan Stanley and strategic advisor to Ripple, uh, she's, anyway, discussed the implications Ripple. of including cryptocurrencies in a tradition. Yeah, nipple, let's call it nipple, nipple. Um, she discussed the advantage of a traditional portfolio over crypto cryptocurrencies, the ideal allocation strategy, and the differences between cryptocurrencies as an asset class and venture capital. Um, dude, we, this is predictable. We already know all this shit. So I want to move straight on to the next article. But one good thing we did get out of this article was that we did get to announce that XRP is finally a POS coin, a POS coin. So that was one good thing out of this article. XRP, proof of shit coin. Oh, Darko, Darko, Darko. Whatever are we going to do with you? Go to the moon. Yeah, uh, go to the moon. Speaking well, of going to the moon, Rob. <coughs> Rob things, speak, things speaking not of looking, going to the moon. Things not looking so good, unfortunately, in Venezuela. Um, things haven't looked good there for some time, but now in Venezuela, where... A cryptocurrency had been one of the few remaining viable uh, methods of exchange there, um, where you know the uh, the national currency is at the stage where you can take wheelbarrows of it and go and get yourself a loaf of bread. Um, the cryptocurrency had been one of the last uh, sort of bastions for these people to actually hold real value. Uh, now. They are running out of P2P trading options. So it seems like uh, the regulations and sanctions related to the U.S. Office of Foreign Assets or Control, uh, OFAC, <laughs> OFAC, uh, Paxful, oh, and, fuck. And they oh, announced fuck. that they will no longer operate services in Venezuela, according to an announcement on September 14th. So uh, basically, what we have is more of the United States, uh, you know, saying they're no good. You can't operate there, and if the business has any roots down here, they have to abide by that. Um, so now Venezuela, Venezuelans, excuse me, have one last option for one less option, excuse me, for trading. Man, I <laughs> uh, for trading cryptocurrency um, and actually uh, being able to hold an exchange value that that retains its value rather than loses it day over day. Um, not a good situation there, uh, and very unfortunate. This is the kind of thing that the cryptocurrency was meant to solve. Um, you, know, you know, the dependence on national currencies. People think, oh, it can never happen here. Ask the people in Greece about that. Ask the people in some of the other countries that have gone through this recently. Um, it, it can happen anywhere. Uh, and to see now them closing off cryptocurrency gateways to these people is really almost an insult to injury at this point. Um, right now, uh, the only uh, real competitor, local bitcoins, is the only one that still continues to operate there. So, I'm assuming the national currency for Venezuela is XIP shitcoin. That's uh, why it's gone so bad there. Oh my god. Well, uh, I, guess, I guess it might as well be, Darko. Yeah, in, in, that's, in that's your unfortunate. Mind. What, 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 That's show, Darko, Darko, show, show me, show me where XRP touched you. Where did they touch you? Where? Yeah. Uh, let me, let me get the teddy bear. Hold on for one moment. Yeah, show, on. Good. Show me on the teddy bear. Yeah. Where? Yeah. This should be good. You got the, you got the, you got your bear. Gotta get me ear things in. Yeah. It's the only time, only chance I get to clean my ears when I put these things in. You got your so bear. You got your bear. We've oh, got with us. That's so nice. That's nice. Say hi, Evil David. Yeah. Say hi. Okay. Uh, show, show me. So show where, me where yeah, the people at Ripple piece. touched you. Here. Uh huh. And here. Uh huh. And there. Hmm. That's why Thank you that, for that demonstration, Evil David. And that's that's why you hate them. Errors. Well, uh, listen, I, I I don't know that I don't know that there's any help for you at this point. You're clearly damaged goods. Um, we may have to replace you. 
What, 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 what's that guy's name? Yeah, the, the head guy. Maybe we'll get him to replace you. Uh, the head guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that guy? <laughs> what the hell's his fucking name? I know his name. Yeah, the, the Ripple company? guy. The Ripple guy. Garth? I don't fucking know. What's uh, his name? I don't know. I don't follow that shit coin. I don't know, Rob. Yeah, he's got a name. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get him. He, he could be my new co-host. He seems like he's got a sense of humor. A better one than yeah, yours, you should... because he doesn't feel the need to constantly trash Ripple when, when he's when he's making a joke. Uh, if you replace me with him, then your show won't last very long, Rob. Mm. My show's not going to last long as it is. But I'll tell you what will last long. I'll tell you what will last forever, and that is the black market. And right now, Eastern Europe's sixth largest crypto service is a dark net market. So, a new report mm. from Chain Analysis has found that Eastern Europe is responsible for more darknet activity and ransomware volume than any other region. Uh, and of course, they're going to blame this all on cryptocurrency, but the bottom line yeah. is, crime always finds a way, and the black market and the dark web and the dark market will always exist. As long as you can hook one computer to another, you're going to have people use it for criminal purposes. Um, but, apparently, the numbers are pretty staggering, and they say that uh, Hydra, which, which is this marketplace, has generated more than $1.2 billion in crypto revenue between June 2019 and June 2020. Now, I'm sure there's some bad shit on there, and, you know, if law enforcement is able to catch those criminals, good for them. Uh, there's also a lot of shit on there that, that, in my opinion, shouldn't be illegal. So, frankly, it doesn't bother me when people trade in it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, a lot of jurisdictions do have laws against things that don't hurt anybody and, and you know it shouldn't be illegal um so I, what percentage of that is impossible to break out you know so uh, you, all of the stuff that's truly bad i would suggest can still be fought just as law enforcement you know can operate on anything else and, and the real problem i think in the world that we live in is not the existence of tools like this it's the problem that uh, law enforcement in many cases doesn't want to catch the real bad guys uh, because they're either on the take or they're so big mm. that they can't be touched because there's no way this shit would be ongoing to the extent that it is I'm talking about the real bad shit human trafficking, child mm. fucking shit all of that garbage, okay these animals wouldn't be able to continue to operate unless they were powerful well placed people this isn't a conspiracy theory this is, they would have been busted up already you cannot have ongoing investigations into this volume of stuff without shutting it down so the answer is that they want it there. Talk to your elected <coughs> officials about that. Don't talk to the cryptocurrency industry. The cryptocurrency industry is offering tools for people to use. Some people will use it for good, some for bad. Uh, that's a human thing. That's not a, uh, a crypto thing. Yeah, well, in 2020, you'd think everything would be traceable, trackable by now, and it pretty much is, dude. I mean, everyone is trackable, even from satellite. Like Everyone is trackable, yet these things keep running rampant. So I'm sure there's bigger things behind the scenes than what we've seen and heard but there has to be it, it will never end it will never end dude it will never ever 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 end there, it will never end part of this is the human story and, and you know we, we can speak about all of the terribleness um, and the different ways that different technologies have allowed people to do things that are not good to their fellow human beings but if you want to go back the other way and this is why it's important to know history we can flip things the opposite way and go um, there's a line from a uh, Sherlock Holmes story in which Sherlock Holmes comments that he fears far more uh, the dark streets of the country than he did the lit streets of the city and the city may be more packed and there may be more opportunities for crimes but the deepest dark darkest crimes were hidden out there in the dark almost wilderness where you'd find just a house in the woods and when nothing was connected we saw people doing truly terrible things to each other outside of the, the scope of society a lot of that has been eliminated because it's harder to be like that these days because of what you say I mean the, the satellites can see things everything you know so <coughs> it's a matter of trading one for the other with the one come a lot of benefits for society in ways that things can be made better um, but it, it is very much the human story. For whatever reason, there are people born into every generation who cannot seem to exist without doing terrible things to others. 
And sometimes it's motivated by personal gain. Sometimes it's motivated by sadistic tendencies, uh, you know, things that we would call pure evil. Um, and we don't seem to have an answer for that. And frankly, uh, the, many of the answers that I've heard are just as frightening as the reality. And so you talk, start talking about a future where we're going to genetically identify people of a certain mindset and make sure they're never born. I don't want any part of that. And I would hope that, you know, maybe we don't get there in my lifetime, but, you know, I have a daughter. I, I hope that she stands up for the right thing. And, and if people try that shit in her, in her lifetime, I hope she fights against it because that's not the way to solve that problem. I believe ultimately that, you know, we can lament things like this dark web thriving. Ultimately, technology has the gift to give to all of us to bring people together. And we know, for example, that the number one remedy for ignorance is exposure. And, you know, the fear of the unknown can at least be eliminated by exposure. You may still not like what you see once you're exposed, but at least you can connect with it a little bit and understand it a little better. That's the promise of technology. We're misusing it terribly, um, but cryptocurrency has the opportunity to be, be a big part of that. Um, and, you know, I, I don't like to see the focus on things like that, even though it's the news and we have to bring it to you. Um, this is something that's going to get a lot of attention and could negatively impact uh, a lot of what we're trying to do because people see this and they say, oh, you know, cryptocurrencies, uh, you, you know, it's, a, it's enabling kiddo por kitty porn or it's enabling human trafficking because some people pay with it. You could say the same thing about cash. You could say if it was chickens that we were trading and you had some sick fuck, he would trade chickens to get a kid that he could get his hands on. That's the guy you got to worry about, not the fucking way that he's paying. I mean, Rob, the last couple of minutes there, you gave a perfect presidential election speech mm. right there. You should go for president. I should, yes. That would, that, that would be the day, wouldn't it? That was heartwarming. Mm. I felt that. It's well, deep. Deep. people, people, it's the fucking truth. I, this is, you know, it's easy to happen to, you know, to speak the truth. Um, we are at a point where uh, a lot of people are, are becoming easily convinced by things just by having them repeated over and over and over again. And we're forgetting a lot of the fundamental truths of our existence. We're buying, so to speak, the illusion. And I say we because it's a collective thing. And it doesn't really help that there are pinpricks of light here, there, and there, and there, and there. Um, the overwhelming majority are, are sort of going along with this. Uh, don't get washed up in it. Think for yourself, and, and you'll realize <coughs> these things. That and pick up a fucking book and read about some of where we've been, because <laughs> it's all right there. The human story repeats itself over and over and over again. And for anybody that cares to pay attention, the whole book is fucking written. You can go look at it. It's only the details that we're working on now. Fucking earth. Fucking earth, but we won't spend too much time on that, Rob, because we've still got a few more things to get. When I get off my fucking um, soapbox. Just as a major U.S. Just as a major US-based giant announced that it increased its already large exposure to Bitcoin, popular crypto analyst Willy Wu shared three new charts which all painted a bullish picture the number one for the number one cryptocurrency. Now, Michael J. Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, the US-based major business intelligence company, which in August said it spent USD $250 million on Bitcoin, today confirmed that the company completed its acquisition of 16,796 additional Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $175 million just yesterday. What do you think about that? I was, mm -hmm. I was distracted by that little plant that you have there. Oh, that's my little olive tree. Yeah. Hmm? What, what are the here, little, what, here on the island of Santorini in Greece, you can't be without an olive tree, bro. What's what? What are the little orange things? The little oh, the little peppers. The little no. There's another one. It's a little olive tree, but they grow orange before they turn black. It's like the Kalamata olives. So the original color comes from green to yellow, then black. They grow the olives when the when the tree is that small. Yeah, these special Kalamata olives, bro. Uh. Special. This is the climate for it, yeah. All right, we digest, Rob, we digest. 
<laughs> now. I'm sorry. Cri yeah. cri Crypto Rob has flown the coop. <laughs> Next time, don't put such a distracting background up. <laughs> mm. um, I know, I know. Um, go ahead, man. Go so, ahead. <clears throat> well, hey, uh, <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> um, listen. Uh, we have a very <laughs> we have a very special treat <laughs> lined up tonight for you people. Uh, Darko had mentioned earlier uh, that uh, he had spoken uh, with our engineer Roland, and that Roland had assured him that this would be something we could do. Uh, and so, for those that don't know or that don't haven't previously dealt with us, seen us anywhere, know who we are. Uh, we do another show called the Crypto Freak Show. We've mentioned it here before. And on that show, we talk with industry guests. It's more of a, a Zoom-style informal thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, get to know them a little bit better and find out some of what they're working on. So we like to run the trailer yeah. for that show so you can check out what that's all about. Because I think if you're watching this one, you you probably might like watching that one. Did I, did I, did I leave anything out? No, well, you, you actually brought this up at the exact same moment i was about to bring it up as well perfect so without further ado we can ask our engineer roland to play the trailer and we'll be back with you right after this very 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 short break enjoy fuck rob this week's articles are fucking shit bro they're fucking shit like i i, I don't know man I, like We'll deal with it after the commercial breaks over, and um, yeah, just gotta keep happy, happy, joy, joy, because I'm struggling, bro. The <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah, come on, come on, man. You, you you can fake it for one more show. <laughs> oh, dude, I fake it every night with my wife. I gotta fake it on the show as well. <laughs> Fuck me. Fuck me. Uh, uh, how long is this fucking right. thing anyway? Oh, we've got two minutes. Uh, the trailer's about two and a half minutes long, so no. we've got two minutes to just good. take a break, fuck around, and talk absolute shit. Mm. Uh, speaking of shit, I've got to have the world's biggest fucking shit straight after the show, bro. You don't have the so, diaper on? No, I normally do every week, but I ran out and didn't have time to rush the shops to buy mm. another one for tonight's episode. So, um, yeah. Uh, can't See, run with I'll just diaper, dude. wing it, man. Oh. Yeah, I know, I'll just wing it so <laughs> you're gonna be anyway, turning much red by the end you'll be sitting there oh, 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 right back. Oh, oh. Get Rob. can you end the show now Rob I'm gonna take a shit yeah you're gonna be like uh what, what's his face when we did the uh oh shit you know uh squ squawk ghost squawk yeah remember he went oh, running, yeah. he went running out of the room like that yeah <laughs> Hey, dude. Uh, dude. Yo. Look at your monitor. Yo. I'm on it, huh? Yeah, look, look, uh, look at your monitor. We're still live, dude. What the fuck? Hey, yeah. What the fuck is going on? Hang on. We're still, we're still on. He's running the promo in your box. What the fuck? No. Roland? Well, uh, welcome Roland, back, people. Roland. Roland, fix that shit now. Yeah. Fix that shit now. What the fuck, man? Well, yeah, dude. Uh, there it is. Uh, so uh, that was uh, that was uh, very enlightening. Uh, welcome back to the Crypto Degenerates. Uh, we apologize for that uh, snafu. Um, not Roland's first fucking mistake that he's made for us since he started. And um, I'm starting to get the feeling that it won't be his last. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. He's saying I forgot to put my sunglasses on for this show. He can put them on for me. No, Roland, do not put my fucking sunglasses on for me. Mm -hmm. he, he's fucking done it. Roland, get that shit fucking off the fucking show now. Fucking idiot. Mm. <sighs> Moving uh... along, Rob, before I lose my fucking shit. Uh, we pay this guy money to do I, this shit. We pay him to produce a high quality show, not make mistakes. The new intro's nice. He agreed to the 450 an hour. He agreed. The, the intro's nice. Mm -hmm. 
Now, he's, he did a good job with that. He's got to get something right. Uh, Fuck me. Uh, listen, listen. Fuck we, me. we will, we will, we will persevere. Remember, okay, baby steps, deep breaths. Remember what your therapist told you. Just in and out, in and out. Yeah, like six. You know, like, six. You know, like, like when you brush your, like when you brush your teeth. It, that, up and down, up and yes. down, side, 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 side. In and out, in and out, side, 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 right? You remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> uh, big news from the States. This one's actually been uh, across multiple news sites and uh, is considered big news here. Uh, new money transmitter licensing programs promise to roll 40 states into a single exam and license. So one of the big things here is if you deal in things like... Uh, uh, crypto payments and and uh, exchanges. I think, in, in the, depending on the way the exchange operates, they might they might need to get one. But they have this thing called a money trader's license. And one of the things that they've charged people for is unlicensed selling of Bitcoin, and mm. that is the absence of of this particular license. So if you're going to operate as what they define as a um, you know, a, a, a payment that you, you would, you're handling this, this, you're a money transmitter, is, is what they call it. Um, you apply for this license and then they wouldn't be able to prosecute for that. It also subjects you to regulations and etc. But um, that's the process that they want you to follow. Unfortunately, until now, it's been a state by state type of deal and widely varying, you know, requirements and what you might think about it as all the different exchanges. You, you know, you pop into an exchange, God knows what they're going to ask of you when you go to sign up to be uh, to use their exchange, KYC wise and everything else. Um, so the different mm. states had different regulations and different hoops that you had to jump through to get this money transmitters license. Now, a bunch of them have gotten together, uh, 40 out of the 50, I guess, and have agreed to all standardize on this one procedure where you put in the application once and you're now eligible for this license in all of the states that are covered by it. For people that need to operate under those you know, parameters or, or, or face prosecution, this is good news. It, it certainly makes things easier and it makes the process more straightforward. And we do need businesses like that in the crypto sphere. They provide a function for a lot of people and a lot of the investment money comes through conduits you know like that so um this was a i good, don't understand good why this wasn't done earlier why were they doing it individually in the first place uh, well it should have been like national standards from the beginning crypto snuck up on a lot of people including the regulators if anything they were further behind than anybody else they were just not prepared for the rapid onset of you know this industry uh, and so the regulations that support it have been you know they've been thrown up piecemeal in 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 ways that are more in tune with the old finance world than with the way cryptocurrency is i mean if you think about it doing things on a state by state basis with cryptocurrency is absurd in itself uh, you know it, yeah. it, it, cryptocurrency Thank transcends you. countries let alone states so the whole yeah. idea is like putting a, a square peg in a round hole but <laughs> it, it was worse because none of them were fucking ready for it not a single one and again i guess the same thing can be said about driving licenses like they vary in state to state as well so i guess it's not that absurd now that i think about it that way but still i mean those driving licenses driving laws in different states do vary from state to state but why don't they have the same law for every state of a nation it doesn't why well in our country in the, in the united states that's a historical artifact of the way our system is operated um you know at its inception the united states was a confederation of states that you know hitherto after gaining freedom from the crown were technically all independent states and they banded together uh, our first government was not under our present constitution our first government was under something called the articles of confederation and it was a much looser association between the states uh, to the point where it became difficult to do certain things as a country and uh, so wanting to do these things uh, a bunch of the leadership got together and said we can't run a country like this we need a new we need a constitution. That's where our constitution came from. But that uh, history, that artifact of the states 
being the sovereign power and the larger country being more of a confederation has stayed with us. It's been slowly eroded over the course of 100 years, 150 years, um, basically from our American Civil War onward, you've seen an erosion of that state power. Um, but the legacy of it remains with us. And you see things like that in driver's licenses where the ability to legislate on that, the right to legislate on that, has traditionally been with the states. Um, the, you know, I know why we see it. I know why it followed with cryptocurrency. I'm just saying the paradigm doesn't fit. A cryptocurrency doesn't belong in that type of a regulatory framework. It, it, it's too large and too unwieldy for states to manage on, on a statewide basis. It doesn't make any sense. Now that you said it, it makes sense what you just said. Mm -hmm. But the concept doesn't make sense, but what you just said makes sense. Does that make sense? I hear you. It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> All right, good. We're on the same page then. Great. Now, Rob, 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 coming up to my last article for this evening. Kiss frontman Gene Simmons suggests he's working to make crypto more accessible. What could the rock star be cooking up for the blockchain industry? I picked out this well, one too. I knew you were going to have it. So I picked out more articles than I usually show up with because I had this one. But I said to myself, you know, if I give Darko enough time, he's going to read this one and I'll just have to discard it. Yeah, I actually didn't pick this article originally, but I took out a couple of the ones I did pick for this week because I thought they were just shit. And then while we started the show, I quickly skimmed through the website, the internet, looking for just one more article, and I thought, I don't, I don't know if Rob would have this or not, but mm. anyway, you do, of course you do, of course you do, mm. but since we started it, um, responding to a tweet from Cameron Winklevoss, co-founder of the Gemini <laughs> Crypto Exchange, mate, Winklevoss is going to be like, corrupting all these people, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> hey, give it a week. Give it a week, and we're gonna see <coughs> Gene Simmons tweeting, "Go <coughs> chain link army," and crypto is awesome. And then a week after that, we're gonna see Gene Simmons saying, "I just sold at a loss. Fuck crypto. You're all morons." And then a week after that, he's gonna come back on Twitter saying, "I will save the crypto people." I Dude, am the Messiah. It, it, the, the way shit has been, I feel like I'm going to open my refrigerator one morning and the Winklevoss twins are going to be in there. I mean, they just, they're fucking, everywhere you're, oh, the Winklevosses were, you know, we're what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, they, they started with the downfall of Portnoy and now they're targeting Gene Simmons next. Well, they must be some bored <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 Get on with it. What? What, hey, Tyler, what did they Tyler, say? What did they say? What did they say to Gene Simmons now? <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Let's find out. So, <laughs> res responding to a tweet from Cameron Winklevoss, blah blah. blah. Uh, it's easier to buy Bitcoin and Ether if you already, if you are already in the system. Oh my God! I'm going to repeat this. This is what Winklevoss said. Are you ready? It's easier to buy Bitcoin and Ether if you're already in the old system. September 15th. The tweet summing up a rather long thread addressing racial bias, crypto and decentralized finance. What the fuck? He writes, if you don't, uh, if you don't have a bank account, it's hard to get funds into crypto. He noted, we need to change this. Retweeting the post with a comment on September 15th. Simmons, the headline vocalist and co-founder of KISS, uh, said cryptically, I will, I am. That was it. That was it. This is news. Um, yeah, the puzzling comment has surely left the market wondering what exactly Simmons meant. Cointelegraph reached out to Simmons for additional details. But he, <laughs> but he soundly ignored them. Let me guess. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So this is not the first occasion on which Simmons has referenced crypto's largest asset. Simmons mentioned his positive view of Bitcoin in September 2017. Oh, now we know why the markets crashed in 2017. Yeah. I'm interested in Bitcoin, he wrote, but only as a piece of the investment puzzle. The celebrity explained to the streets during an interview three years ago. 
The Street published its interview with Simmons on, on September 15th, 2017, exactly three years prior to his present day response to Cameron Winklevoss. Um, Bitcoin has garnered comments from other mainstream figures in 2020 as well, such as Harry Potter author JK Rowling, although the writer expressed significant confusion about the asset. So no, uh, no, nobody, uh, nobody, nobody told nobody told them that she's been cancelled. Nah, hmm. nah. So yeah, like we said earlier, I think the Winklevoss twins are getting really, really, really bored, and they're just handpicking who they want to fuck with next hmm. and make look silly while losing a lot of money with their guidance and professionalism. And right. it obviously worked with Portnoy, um, but I think they're getting bored with him, so now they're moving on to Gene Simmons. Well, hey, listen, I mean, if Gene Simmons wants to do something to make it easier for people to get crypto, uh, that's great. I, we need all the help we can get. I have never been a big fan of Mr. Simmons, um, you know, uh, personally or otherwise. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we we certainly welcome everybody. I, I don't know what it is the Winklevoss twins are actually aiming at. Their actions in the public space lately have been nothing short of strange. Uh, and it's hard to figure out exactly what it is they think they're trying to do. But they do have a lot of money and influence with which to do it, and they seem to be getting some attention. I applaud that. I look forward to the Winklevoss twins bobblehead dolls. I would buy a pair in a heartbeat. I would part with that money in no fucking... I don't care what they cost. Does anybody sell those? I want them on my fucking desk. Winklevoss twins bobblehead dolls, they're going to look the fucking same, except they'll be dressed slightly differently, Okay. That's, I mean, this is the future that I want to live in. Yeah, they don't sell them, unfortunately, Rob, because if they did, you would be the only person who would purchase them in the world. Oh, well, so that, it's not financially viable for that. That may well that. be. Maybe maybe I can get Sorry. a pull string doll. Every time you pull the string, it gives you some fun fact about Bitcoin. Right? I'll give you a fun fact, bro. I was actually recently <laughs> watching a documentary <laughs> on YouTube, right? No, this is quite cool, actually. It's not crypto related, but I'm going to throw it in there just for the sake of it anyway. Oh, you're going to waste everybody's um, time. Great. I am down for that. Let's go. Fucking oath. You know, this is actually really interesting. I think everyone's going to find this. I'm not, I'm not fucking around, bro. I'm not this is not a joke, right? right. I was just yesterday watching a, a documentary on YouTube between some dude and Ed and Lorraine Warren. You know, the Amityville horror movies, Annabelle movies. The, pro the private investigators that they called, or the paranormal investigators they called in those movies. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah? <clears throat> nope. The world famous paranormal investigators, right? Um, they mentioned that the Annabelle case, and this is about 15 years before the movies came out in an interview. Um, they said that they brought up the Annabelle case of the doll, the possessed doll, and it was actually like people thought it was the spirit of a little girl who died in a car crash inside oh. a doll. How nice. But God, God would not allow that to happen. So it was actually a demon in the doll. And there was a lot of witnesses that apparently, when they went, went to the house, they would see this doll and it had frail floppy legs. It was a doll, like woolen, woolen doll, right? He had no, woolly frail legs. He would be standing upright in the doorway, just looking at him. And there was multiple witnesses to this shit. Whose house, who, who, whose house was fucking this? Interesting. Um, they didn't say whose house it was, but they made, the mo three movies about it, uh. and they're called Annabelle, Annabelle Comes Home, but this is like 15 years before the movies came out, they discussed it in an interview on some show, um, Ed and Lorraine Warren. It was some really interesting shit. Um, why, why, why didn't they burn the doll? Just, uh, because they wanted to keep it as evidence, that's why. They created at home a museum full of paranormal cursed items that they retrieved from different investigations, because they've been doing investigations for like 50 years thousands of them and they had a room in their house where um they protected it but it, everything inside was cursed from an investigation and they kept everything as and documented it as evidence in case people say oh yeah nah no you're full of shit there was no doll or there was no this there was no piano that plays on its own or whatever uh -huh. um yeah it was really fucking interesting well if the doll is evil why not in. just chuck it in the fire i don't understand i mean that seems a little silly you're gonna leave something like that around evidence oh they they encased it in a protective case that's why and they had a big sign do not definitely do not touch do not feed the doll do not open 
Don't don't stick your Do fingers in the, the cage. Doll. Don't stick your fingers in the cage. That's the sign yeah. that hangs outside my door. <laughs> and now something that's a little bit more crypto related. Interesting yeah. fun fact. A lot of people keep saying to the moon, to the moon. We're going to go to the moon. You know, we've right. heard it a million times, right? Sure. Interesting. Interesting fact, though. Now, if you were to leave Earth on a rocket to go to the moon, uh -huh. it would take approximately three days to reach the moon at current technological speeds. Now, the food packets in the rocket actually have, uh, they're like radiation shields, right? Because there's a lot of radiation in space. Now, when an astronaut takes the food off the shelf mm. and eats it, they have to reuse the bag to shit in it, and seal it up, and put it back on the wall where they found it because shit is actually radiation proof and it helps you know any radiation leakages they pre it prevents it from coming into the ship how fucking weird is no, no one knows this shit man uh-huh no punt intended so do you still want to go to the moon well i tell you it would certainly suck if you grabbed the wrong bag down off the shelf later on <laughs> You told me it was Nutella. <laughs> yeah. Well, where, where's the dipping oh, stick? Where this, this this Nutella didn't come with the fucking dipping sticks. What the fuck? I'm just gonna have Where'd to squeeze go? it out into my mouth directly. <laughs> so yeah, if you really want to go to the moon, you've got to be prepared to surround yourself with a wall of shit that's sealed up. Quite literally. Quite literally. Amazing. Uh, thanks, Darko. I, I, I really, uh, you know, that's why I come here. It's for the education. And, um, you know, the, the more fun facts are, are just more uh, spaces to fill in my brain. So uh, I really appreciate you sharing that, as I'm sure the people do. You're welcome. To get even further back towards the cryptosphere, since that's what we're doing here, uh, this this piece of news, uh, the, last, the last one that I have for tonight, ah, comes to us from Coindesk, and it's big news for miners, uh, Jihan Wu regains the upper hand in Bitmain co-founder fight. So, as our viewers may or may not be aware, there has been a legal battle, uh, battle over ownership and control going on uh, in Bitmain in the organization um, with the business registration records, which are apparently a very big deal in China, uh, being in dispute and what have you. Uh, as of the writing of this article, China's business registration uh, record update on September 14th shows that Wu has again become the recognized legal representative and executive director of Beijing Bitmain Technology, uh, the operating ent entity of Bitmain. Now, uh, I'm not uh, as versed on this as I should, but I do believe this dispute has caused delays in the shipping of, of product and and. and and, you know, generally cause problems for people. So for those people, this will be good news. Bitmain, as we know, one of the suppl largest suppliers of ASIC miners. Um, you know, some might say the only real game in town, but uh, it's a pretty big deal to people that, that look to mine coins using these, these, these specialized equipment. How could it be disputed? I mean, when they found it, founded it, someone's name would have had to be on some documentation. So I, I, I I think it was I think when it was started it was either a partnership or there was more than one person involved and what what happened here was a falling out between the two biggest players so when that something like that happens you know in a business things aren't going to be necessarily done in all in one person's name or all in terms of the organization in China uh, I know that very specific about you know needing to have a name on the registration form for a business that's the person who's going to be going to, uh, you know, gone to and recognized as the leader of the business by the government. There's a, a similar situation, a little bit different, but um, right now with the uh, chip technology company Arm, which is a ostensibly a UK company, even though it's owned by SoftBank, it was just sold to Nvidia, the uh, chip maker, the uh, video card maker. Uh, today, actually, they announced the sale or yesterday, but. Uh, ostensibly a UK company has a branch in China called Arm China and the chairman there has like gone rogue 
and he, he's refused to respect the decisions of the larger company, but has refused to vacate the offices, literally is camped out at the offices of, of Arm China, because he is legally recognized by the Chinese government, because this is the uh, piece of arm that operates in China, nobody will go there to remove him. In other words, the Chinese government recognized that he has the right to stay there, even though his parent company wants him to leave. It's almost absurd, you know, to hear it. You and I are sitting here listening to this like, what the fuck? Like, why, how can that happen? But the way the Chinese laws are written, this shit is very important. It matters whose name is on the piece of paper. And it can have real-world consequences in terms of how you can do business. Um, uh, Bitmain being a Chinese company, that's got to be exacerbated. So having somebody else's name who's not cooperative with the business anymore on the business registration documents would cause a lot of problems and has caused a lot of problems for, for Bitmain. There you go. Glad I'm not in that part of the world. Yeah, well, for a number of reasons. The world's I'm on sure. fire and this shit happens, bro. This shit happens. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, news what, 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 one last Yay. note there. One last note there, it's pretty funny. As a result, Bitmain's employees were forced to take sides, and the standoff caused significant shipment delays. What? For, for their cut. Yeah, the employees. Had, so they had this mini war going on, uh, business in China. Nothing like oh. really the rest of the world. I mean, so can you imagine? You had to pick your team. You're all working for the same company, but which side are you supporting? For <laughs> this is what's going on. You know, I, as an industry, I hope we can get a little more professional than shit like this. Unfortunately, you see it everywhere. Um, you know, the, the whole crypto bro mentality is no stranger to people that have been in the industry. Plenty of that. Plenty of bullshit. Plenty of nonsense. Plenty of people just schlocking whatever the fuck passes in their part of the world. Um, at some point, maybe, uh, possibly, uh, there will be a move towards greater professionalism. That will push some of this under the rug until <laughs> until then wishful thinking until then you're stuck with us and that is why this is really the apropos show for you to be watching because let's face it in the crypto sphere all of these people really truthfully even the ones a lot of you look up to are a bunch of clowns they act like clowns and they are yep. clowns and so yeah. uh, well who better to give you the news about these fucking clowns and their monkey fucking clown show than us Two fucking degenerates that don't fit anywhere into healthy society at all. And that's what we're here to do, people. That is the reason for this show. Fucking earth. Yeah. So, having said that, please make sure you subscribe, like, share, and retweet this episode. Hit that notification bell. Stay up to date. Stay in tune. Tune in every Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EST and every other night, Sunday to Thursdays, if you have the free time to do so. And don't worry about what anybody else says. Crypto degenerates, me like very nice, good time. Very Spread nice, the word. Good time. Very nice, good time. Until next, very nice, good time. I am Rob Loja. That is Darko. We are the degenerates. Have a good night, people. Well, there's only one thing to say. It's the most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day. Cut. Print it.